Hello, I am teacher Karina and I'm here to talk to you about learning English. Are you the kind of student who has already started many different courses but never finished any of them? Do you still dream about being fluent? If you're watching this lesson, you have asked yourself all these questions. Besides, you're probably sick and tired of having to learn grammar rules, right? The point I'm trying to get across goes much beyond the grammar. What's the real key to effective communication? The answer to this question is crystal clear. You need to know vocabulary. Combine it with a massive amount of listening. And bingo! Just like a child learning how to speak, you will need to expose yourself to lots of spoken English before you'll be able to produce coherent language with minor interference of your mother tongue. Now, how do we learn vocabulary? To answer to this question, let's go back in time a little. In the not-so-distant past, when technology was not a fact of life, there was a belief that the grammar was the main structure of a language. Imagine English as a tree. The trunk and the branches would represent the grammar structures, and hopefully students would be able to fill in the branches with leaves and fruits, the so-called vocabulary, on their own. But technology has changed everything. In this day and age, super powerful computers are able to retrieve everything that is produced in the English language. And because of that, linguists started to set up different patterns for language learning, based on the idea of frequency. What sounds more natural in English? How do words combine more frequently so that your use of English will resemble the one of native speakers? Now, if the tree bears fruits, how much nicer would English be? Therefore, the first approach to language teaching and learning of vocabulary came out in the year 2000 with the book The Lexical Approach by Michael Lewis. The basic concept on which this approach rests is the idea that an important part of learning a language consists of being able to understand and produce lexical phrases as chunks. Students are thought to be able to perceive patterns of a language, grammar, as well as have meaningful set uses of words at their disposal when they are taught in this way. If this feels confusing and too technical, let's break it all down. Vocabulary is definitely an old-fashioned word. Lexis refers to the way you combine words so as to create chunks or expressions that carry meaning. Just like Portuguese, proverbs are very fixed expressions that express a truth based on common sense or the practical experience of humanity. But they are highly metaphorical and are intimately connected to a people's culture. For example, just think. English comes from England, a place notorious for its rain. The sun shines silver in there. That is something we say when there is something good coming out of an unpleasant situation. How do we say this in Portuguese? A males que vem para bem. See, in English, you will take blood out of a stone, not milk. If making someone 
give or tell you something is like getting blood out of a stone. It is something very difficult. An idiom is a combination of words that has a figurative meaning. There are thousands of idioms and they occur frequently in all languages. However, the speaker has some flexibility of choice depending on what he or she has to say. For example, some time ago a teacher I know well told his print to me the student that her English was improving by leaps and bounds. The problem was, as the student was not linguistically mature enough, she obviously went to Google Translate. You know what it says? Forgive me for my pork and cheese, but it is aos trancos e barrancos. Yes, that's it. In Portuguese, this means exactly the opposite. One of the most important lessons I can teach you then is how to use the dictionaries so that you will avoid making terrible social mistakes. Remember, Google Translate is wildly inaccurate. Phrasal verbs are usually two word phrases consisting of verb and adverb or verb and preposition. They are highly metaphorical and depend on the context for meaning. Because of this, the speaker will have a number of different ways to combine words. They may be a few too many. Oh my God! For example, Look for something is to hope for something, to expect something. Look into something means to examine something. Look after somebody or something is to be responsible for or to take care of somebody or something. To look at something to examine something very closely to look somebody up, something up to look for information in a dictionary or reference book or by using a computer to look up to somebody to admire or respect somebody by the way do we do you know how to say Vou ficar de olho em você em inglês. This is a body idiom. I'll keep an eye on you. A collocation is a sequence of words or terms that co-occur more often than would be expected by chance. Remember some of the expressions I have used earlier on. For example, immediately obvious, intimately connected, wildly inaccurate. These are just a few of the many different types of collocations. Perhaps the best example of collocations refer to make and do. So, before we call it a day, let me give you a piece of advice. Start watching your favorite TV series with subtitles in English. Take notes and look up the expressions in the dictionary. Make sure to make comparisons between spelling and pronunciation. Take more notes. Keep your Facebook account in English. Like pages that can provide you with reliable information in English. Stop using Google Translate. Read more in English. And above all, give yourself the chance to think in English. This is certainly the only way to finally, truly become a fluent speaker.
Thanks for watching. Bye.